got to a point I just had to stop counting. Father appeared in the Bible 1,442 before I lost count. But do you know that from Genesis to Revelation, the word mother only appeared 229 times. Only 229. The word mother, yeah, 229 in the Bible. Father, 1,442. We lose count. Now, it shows you how important the role of a father. I'm not despising the mothers, but listen to me very well. It shows you how important the role of a father is. That's why I will encourage everyone here, everyone that has played the role or is still playing the role of a father in your life should be appreciated today. Did you hear me? Should be appreciated today. We only have one Father's Day in the whole world, but several Mother's Day. In fact, we used to lose count when we are counting Mother's Day. But the Bible have pulled it right. 1,442 fathers in the Bible. Father mentioned. And only 229 times the word mother was mentioned. Uh, so the, the world is changing the world. It is Father's Day that should be plenty, not Mother's Day. But thank God for everyone. Let's go deep into it because I won't stop. Listen, the role of a father, like I said, is a very sensitive and important role. If I don't finish this message today, I'll finish it at the uh, Father's Day of next year, 2024. Yes. Because uh, we only have one Father's Day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You know, God made provision, listen, for everyone to enjoy three kinds of fathers. Everyone, God has made it available for you to enjoy three kind of fathers. The first kind of father that God wants everyone to enjoy is called the heavenly father. Relationship with God the father. In fact, when Jesus was to teach his disciples how to pray, he said, when you pray, say, our father which art in heaven. So, heavenly father is the first father every one of us must enjoy. Today I'm using the topic why you need to celebrate your fathers why you need to celebrate your fathers now and we are starting with the heavenly father why we need to celebrate your fathers let's look at some scriptures this morning listen when we talk about father father means source fathers are the source of existence that's why you see that even in the natural it is the man that owns the egg the woman is the carrier. Now, and when we talk about Heavenly Father, he's a source of life. Why should you thank the Heavenly Father? In John chapter, Jeremiah, sorry, Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's start with Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4 to verse 8. Do you know that this Heavenly Father, you need to appreciate him because, listen, you are not a mistake. He did not create you to become, to be born in the north where you will not be appreciated he did not create you to be born in Maduguri where you might eventually become an Alumanderi. You know, look at this. The Bible says, The word of the Lord came to me saying, What did the word of the Lord say? In verse 5, Because God is the one that organized our life. Verse 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I did what? I knew you. Before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Why should you appreciate your heavenly father? He has planned for you ever before you were born. Before you were born, he had, he had organized your plan. Everybody beat your hands on your chest and say, I'm not a mistake. I can't hear you clearly. Even if people say you are a mistake, look at it clearly. No one can be born to the earth without the permission of God. So you are here on an agenda to fulfill the plan of your heavenly father. I read on. It says, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations ever before you were born. That's why if you follow the will of the heavenly father, everything you are to become, he has prepared before time. Why did you not die? Those days, they were castigating you because God knows that you will one day be in Canada. Yes. 
Your heavenly father has plans. That's why when it is time to thank fathers, please, please, from your heart, thank your heavenly father because you are not a mistake. There are so many people that died in bomb blast in the north. Some even died in the mistake, the bomb that blast in, in, in Lagos some years ago. But why were you not born in that town? Where were you not, why were you not born in the place where a pandemic will happen? Look at what happened with coronavirus. Millions of people. Canada that some people want to run to today. Spain that some people are running to today. There was a time that those places were death zone. Why is it that it is now? That it is better? That See, God has planned for you. Let's finish that scripture. We are not yet true. He has planned for you. He has plans. Those plans have been written before you were born. Show me verse 6. We stop at verse 8. Verse 6. Verse 6. Then said I, Ha, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. How will you make me a, the prophet to nation? For I am a youth. I am also young. But look at the response of God. In verse 7 and verse 8, God responded to the question that Jeremiah asked him. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I will send you. And whatsoever I command you, you shall speak. Show me the summarizing one verse 8. Do not be afraid of their faces. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. So every one of us should have access to the heavenly father. But see, do you know that you cannot enjoy all the plans that God has for you until you start a relationship with him? Now, that's why some people are still struggling today. They have not started a relationship. In John chapter 1 verse 12, he shows us how to start a relationship with him. Now, And it is when that relationship starts that you can now enter into the plan of God. I want them to see John chapter 1 and verse 12. It says to them that receive him, that believes in his name. He said to them he giveth power to be called what? Sons of God. So you cannot enter into this glorious plan that he has. Let's read it together. One, two, and let's go. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. So the moment you become born again, you can now enter into the plan. If you are not born again, you can't enter. If you are not born again, you are just walking about. Oh, ti wonu ileri ati etu olorun ti baba are ni fun aye. He's your heavenly father. And he wants to be your heavenly father because he has a plan concerning you before you were born. So every one of us have access to the heavenly father. Hallelujah. Talk to me hallelujah. Then number two, we all have access to relationship with our earthly fathers. Earthly fathers. Our earthly father is our earthly source. Now, if your father did not meet with your mom, you would never have been born. Only Jesus Christ came without a father, an earthly father. But every other one of us came with relationship with our heavenly fathers. Hear me. And I know somebody will be saying, Pastor, if you know my father, you will not say I should thank God for my father. Pastor, you don't know my father. Pastor, you don't know my father. If you know my father, I will tell you why you should thank God for your father. I will tell you and I will tell you two stories. Now, let's move on. Let's move on. We all have Heavenly Father. We are, we have been a, we are product of his loins. We are product of his loins. Do you know that? Our earthly fathers are the ones that, de that determined our, uh, our, our, how can I put it, our personality. Now, it is the name that your earthly father gave you that you bear. Go search scriptures. Every time a woman is the one that names the child, she names the child with her emotions. You will see that that name will bear either her pain or her joy. But fathers don't name like that. Father's name with purpose. Go search scripture. When the mother of that man who went through pain, what's his name again? You know, uh, what's his name again? He, not he, okay, one is Ichabod too. Another one is Ichabod. When the mother gave back to Ichabod, he said the glory have departed. That was the grandson of uh, of Eli. But the is he Akan that is his name? The other one, no, not not Akan, not Jabez. The mother went through pain too and called him Jabez because. It was born out of pain. 
Look at Benoni, the mother of, uh, of uh, Benjamin. It was the father that changed. You know, you can't call it. Ben Benoni means full of pain. But Benjamin's, uh, 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 Jacob came and said, no, he shall not be Benoni, he shall be Benjamin, my, the son of my right hand. So your fathers are the ones that declare your identity. When they told him a boy has been born, he looked at you and said, his name is going to be Bolahan. If they leave it up to your mom, your mom will have looked at you and looked at you and looked at you and say, ah, I have a boy. I have a boy. She will just look for one name ah, to justify that she has a son at last after several girls. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thank, why should you thank God for your father? Now let me ask you, I'm coming to you now. Yes, he didn't send you to school. Some of you will say, yes, my father was not there. But do you know something? You should thank God because your father did not bring you into a covenant that will make you fight all your life. You don't know that there are, there are some people, their fathers brought them into covenant. Hello, me, but I won't, I won't be one word no, I won't eject on that one my young jag won't the same. But did your father give you that? He may not give you land or her house. Maybe your dad is dead. He didn't give you land. He didn't give you house. He didn't put money down, but he didn't give you battles as well. We used to have a, a brother in our church many years ago. My wife will remember, Brother Harrison from Imo State. Ah, I've never seen battles like that in my life. Their father's father was the priest of Amadioha. And when the man was dying, he covenanted all the members of his family will serve Amadioha for life. Amadioha is a god of thunder. And when his son insisted, no, I will not, thunder killed him in the, in the sitting room. Thunder killed his wife. And his children began to run mad one after the other. I'm telling you true life story. You, you thank God for your father. As you remember today, don't remember the negative side. Thank God that he did not lay, I wrote here, a battle foundation for you. Now look at this father in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 27. Look at this father. Thank God for your father. He did not lay a battle foundation for you. 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse 27. Look at this, one of these fathers. You are alive. That's why you are saying you are hungry. If you had sent me to school. No, 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 no. He didn't send you to school, but he didn't give you battles. Where is, where is the kings? I'm waiting for you. 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 27. If we have somebody that is faster than them, please just open your Bible and, and read it for me. Now in that 2 Kings, look at it. Then he took his eldest son. He would have, who would have reigned in his place? And did what? And offered him as burnt offering. These are useless fathers. He offered his first son as burnt offering. But your own father didn't do that. He had the opportunity to use you for Rishwa to make money. He didn't do that. What is the topic we are treating? Why you should celebrate your father. Even if he's dead, thank God for his life today. That he, he, the Bible says he offered him as a burnt offering. Do you know that some fathers don't care? They will say, don't, you know what, you know what, let him go and become slave and be paying me the money. Thank God for your father. B, another reason why you should thank God for your father, I'm talking about your earthly father now, he did not curse you like Noah did to Ham and Jacob did to Reuben. Did your father curse you? Ah, do you know what uh, Noah did to Ham? He looked at Ham, his son. He said, servants of servants shall you... Even if you have said servants alone, kubati da, oni eru a eru lo je, which means that even he will look at servants and call servants boss. He be told magi yade. Thank God, your father did not curse you. The only thing he didn't do that is making you angry is because he didn't send you to school. He didn't do what he's supposed to do at on time, but he did curse you. Look at what Jacob did to Reuben. He said, Reuben, you my son. My first son, 
excelling in strength and power. The Bible says he looked at Reuben and said, You shall no longer ex- oh, to tie your man. Ah! Say, Thank you, Lord, for my earthly father. I didn't hear you now. The third kind of fathers that you are, that God wants you to have, is relationship with your spiritual father. Don't forget, heavenly father, number one, number two, earthly father. What's number three? Spiritual father. Now, your spiritual father is your destiny fine tuner. They are the ones that will teach you how you can enter into the plan and purpose of God for your life. They are your destiny fine tuner. Look at a backup for that. 2 Kings 13, 14 to 20 and 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 12. 2 Kings 13, 14 to 20 and 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 12. We need spiritual fathers. Now, we need spiritual fathers because they are fine tuners. You know, you will grow up and leave your biological father. That's your earthly father. But whatsoever plan the heavenly father has for you, you need spiritual fathers to be able to guide you. Umonko, biwa she riri, marin bai, rin bai, biwa she riri. Show me the scriptures. Now there is no time. Second Kings chapter 13 from verse 14 to verse 20. Now while they are bringing it, it was prophet Elisha. He was sick, about to die. The king of Israel, now Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came to him and wept over his face. And what did he say? Oh, my father, my father, the child of Israel and their horsemen, my father. And Elisha said to him, take a bow. He was giving him, giving him instruction and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Now, what did he say again to him? Next verse. Move so fast. We don't have all the time. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow so he put his hand on it and Elisha put his hands on the king's hands can you see at his dying point he was still instructing and he said open the east window and he opened it then Elisha said shoot and he shot and he said the arrow of the Lord's deliverance can you see he was following the instruction that's why hear me there should be somebody that can talk to you if there is nobody that speaks to your life, I'm sorry, oh, there is trouble. Don't forget, because fathers are identity makers. They make you who you are. He kept instructing the king until he died. Now, go again to that same 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 12. 2 Kings, there is no time. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 12. Who is your spiritual father? I'm asking you. Answer it in your heart. And Elisha saw it. And he cried out, My father, my father, the child of Israel, and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is Elisha talking about Elijah. And look at what dropped from his spiritual father. He also took up the mantle of Elijah. That had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the river in verse 14. His first miracle happened when he struck, he struck the river from the mantle he received from his father, and the thing parted ways. So God wants you to have three kind of fathers. Number one, heavenly father. Number two, biological earthly father. Number three, spiritual father. Your spiritual father's job too is to be praying for you, to be interceding for you so that you can enter into the purpose of God for your life. Now let's go to phase two of this message. I wrote here, fathers, please understand what you need in order to, to, to successfully carry out your three divine roles. Every father has three major roles. How many roles? Three. Now I will tell you the roles and I will tell you what you need in order to be able to fulfill your role. What's your first role as a father? Your first role as a father, hear me, is to protect your children. 
That's your first role. Protection. Whenever there's anything in the house, it should not be the mother that will come and kill the cockroach or kill the rat or say there is a snake in the house and the daddy has run on top of the table. Daddy to go to the table. The father's mission is to protect. Every man here, say after me, I am the father of my house. I didn't hear you. If there is anything spiritual, I should not be calling you to say, Diki, Diki, Eva, Ejagbadu, Ogunthideu, Ogunthideu. No. By the grace of God, God has made me the spiritual father of this house. If there is anything, I will be the one they will call. I've handled several cases like that when some of you will come to the church to show me medical reports and the medical reports is not something good. And they will be looking at my face. Papa, what do you say? Papa, pastor, what do you say? Pastor, what do you say? And we pray. Look at the one that almost happened here. My thank God for you, Dickness. You know she would have died on this chair. Was it three Sundays or four Sundays ago that she collapsed? She was going out. She wanted to enter and she just fell down. And they rushed her back here. Ah, she a pastor with you. And you know, one of my spiritual sons, a pastor of a church, he just came with his own child. They just gave birth to a child. It was through CS. So they came to show me the child. I was still carrying the child. You know, talking with them, encouraging them. When they were carrying her in, I had to change my mood. The people were looking at <laughs> because when they put her on the chair, she just did like this and turned her head down. Ah, some of us only chair, mini. See no church. My wife looked at me. I look at her. She held her hand. I put my hand on her head, and we began to pray. That is the job of a father. Protects. That's why I always tell you all the past, vision in the prophet that say, ah, 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 Mori no kon, e wu kamba. No, no, no. A father doesn't talk like that. Will I go and wake my children and say, Enola, Enola, I'm Robert Saran. No, no, no. If there's anything, I will do what, let them sleep. A real father doesn't call you and be telling you bad vision. No, no, no. He will see it and pray about it. If it's something we need to instruct you, we tell you, be careful about this, be careful about this. I can't tell you the number of times we saw that uh, our son, Mr. Oguyemi, met, that was, was last year. We saw death. We were just, ah. We were seeing this and we were praying. Then one of our sons now came and said, Sir, Muma, Lala, bye-bye. Brother, brother Tunji, Muni, don't worry. I have seen it. And we began to pray. Thank God for him. He will not live. I mean, he will not die. He will live. Yeah. You will live and not die. Everyone planning your death shall die for you. Father's responsibility. That's why. Brace up if you are a father here. You are to protect. I can do anything to protect my family. I told some people, I told them, I said, if you talk against me, I am quiet. I am gentle. But if you speak against my wife, I will beat you up. The person said, but you are a pastor. I said, that is me. If you want me to beat you up, speak against my wife. Or let my children run to me and you are coming to beat them behind me. You will know that I went to a bad boys high school. Okay, when you can call a corny boys high school. I call you another. Praise the Lord. Now, back to what we are saying. It is the responsibility of fathers to protect. To protect the integrity of your family. To make sure that harm does not come to your family. It is part of protection for you to pay house rent on time. It is part of protection for you to pay school fees on time. To make sure that there is no shame comes. That's why I see. Pray for fathers. Their job is not easy. Hear me? And for you to fulfill your protection responsibility, what do you need? You need God. Create time to relate with God. So that he can teach you how to protect your family. Who can teach? is God. So that he is the only one that can teach you how. 
That's why if there's anybody that should be serving God, he, he shouldn't just be the mother. You know, our generation, we say, we push mommies, to, our wives to church, and we are at home. No, 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 no. It is the man that is in the front that should be fire on fire. Second responsibility of the father is to do what? Is to provide. That's why, as I used to say it, God is Jehovah Jireh. The man is a family Jireh. Jehovah Jireh means God the provider. The husband is man the provider. That's why they will look up to you. I pray for every man that is here. May God give you what it takes to meet the need of your family. See, may you not experience the thing that will make your family not to look up to you. Ah, you know what it means? When they no longer know, look up to you, it means they don't know whether you exist. But yes, often gone, kilo verse. You are the provider. Now, and what do you need in order to have what to provide? You need to work hard. You know, I told you for protection, you need relationship with God. But for you to provide, you need to work hard. A man must, a father must not be lazy. A father knows that he has so many things to do. Listen, a father must not even have one job. You must be creative. You must be a creative thinker as a man. How can I put one plus one, two plus two? How do I do this and this and this and this and that? That's why I work hard. So that when there's a need in the family, you can provide. I've been married 21 years. This is me. By the grace of God, I'm not promoting myself. I've learned this from fathers. They work hard. A father is a workaholic. A father is not the type that will sit down to watch all the telemundus. No, fathers don't have time. Mothers can have time. You know, they are home racers. They raise the children where? In the house. But if you are a man, you can talk about Z World. You can talk about uh, uh, which other one is raining. Uh, the big, big brother, BB Ninja. Yes, which other one again? You know, ma, sa, ma, small sports. And they, at times they can do sports, you know, to just at least uh, uh, to free himself. <laughs> That's why at times, even when I buy pepper soup for myself and malt, I use when if I see that I'll put the open it. At times I send them go and buy a for me. Three five. Mark be me waju. Mark be malt is egg be me le le so only was sports. So I'm not I'm not I want to think the tension crew like that. But a man works hard. A man works hard so that he can provide for his family. You know, it will be a shameful thing that you are alive. Your family is looking up to somebody else. Oh, nile nombe niye. I was telling a, a a commercial driver. He picked me. Uh, sometimes last week I was going somewhere. You know, our economy have taught us now not to go everywhere with your car. So it's, it's, it's check and balance. If you want to go to someone, you have calculated, okay, if I do this, no, no. You know, that's, that's, that's why the cars we buy from abroad is sound. Their transportation system is solid. So they, they don't go out with their cars if it's not necessary. Oh yeah, let's come back to the word. So, number three, as the man, what's the third thing you provide? You provide direction. You are, see, no, every man, hear me, don't put your wife in charge of direction. Your wife should not be the one telling you, bye, Nicalo, bye, Nicalo. But even if she tells you, pray over it, think over it, and once it is, okay, let's do it this way. But the wife, your wife just wake you up. Ah, honey, honey, honey. Oh, sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. We are tired of this house. We need to get rent a bigger house. And sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. We need to get... No, 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 no. As a man, don't act like a fool. You are a man. Me, ni kumak ba cancel o. Cancel o be ni man wise. But at times, some of their counsel comes from their emotion too. So, it is not all... 
no, what? You know, calm down. You are the one to offer direction. Now, once your wife brings an opinion, listen to it. Ask my wife. When she brings an opinion, I will listen. Okay, I've had you. But I won't do anything. I'll think over it. Then I'll come back. Okay, that's all. Let's do it. It's not that I don't respect you, but I, all, I need to still think because it is me, God, we blame. You know what always makes me remember? I always remember what happened in Genesis chapter 3. The woman gave this, her husband the fruit to eat. And when God came, why did you eat the fruit? The, woman, the man was sincere. He said, my wife gave me. And God said to him, and because you followed what your wife said, you have sense now, common sense. I gave you instruction, your wife gave you a different one. Are you getting what I'm saying? A man has to offer direction. Dear, dear, umonko, umonko. Ah, till they change the school, I'm going to buy. Tabama change, I'm going calculate. Tabama ra uniform, ra gogwe. E lo la jeta fe vitori e binu kuru mbe nye. Once she school fees drive, she ma wabi wa nu. You know, some of you, once they do school fees drive, I'm going to go the next thing you come home, you come and tell, dear, dear, temporary, you was, he told you, me relay me. Can you imagine what see I want mommy sita to recommend 15,000? I'm a wa school meal. Now, you two don't do like Bewudani brother. You didn't think very well that you will pay school fee in the new place. You will buy uniform. You will buy, you just calculate. Okay, what's the problem? Now, instead of paying that 15,000, you go and pay 75,000 somewhere. And it does not mean that your wife will not ask you money for food that day. God is trusting the man for what? Direction. This is what we can afford, my dear. This is how we should live our lives now. And where do you get direction from? The man. I wrote here, you must develop a listening ear. ear. Learn from the wise. When you see people that are progressing, learn from them. That's how to develop wisdom to lead. Ah, this time is running. Learn from them. That's how to develop wisdom to lead. Augmenting of in daddy, a young man, Now let's go to the next point. What mothers? Okay, okay, let's put it this way. Mothers, never make these mistakes about fathers. They are just two. Mothers, I'm talking to you now. Never make these mistakes about fathers. Number one, never devalue your husband before his children i come again don't devalue your husband do you know why look up if you are finished writing a father is the authority figure that determines how a child will live life now look up go and find out every child that the mother made to devalue their fathers don't last in marriage. Go and find out anywhere. Because the husband, their father, is the first authority figure that they know. If you always talk to him anyhow, in the presence of your children, your children will grow up not having respect for order. It's like we have too much women here. You are very quiet. So are you angry? Am I safe? Is the truth. Don't devalue them. Because the man's role in the marriage, hear me, he is the one that sets order. Ask my wife, she will tell you anytime there's anything, she will report to me. Once she reports to me, my children will be shivering. Now, once I correct them, they know. Because you, the man is the, is the authority order that will put the children in order. We used to have one family in our church many years ago. Many years ago. The woman is dead now. Her husband is still alive. This woman will devalue. He will call the, the, uh, the, uh, her husband in the presence of the children. The man sells coffin. Some of you will know, will remember now. Only the old members, old people can remember. The man sells coffin. And anytime the, the woman sells fruits, she always travels to those states to bring fruits. And she was doing well in business. So, because she knows that people don't usually buy coffin. I'm okay. Because 
could that be all get there? Could that be all son? Bay your back, who won't hear a pussy? Shall I get to some boy, Jell? To Yoju, while for son. Digest it. Don't go there, whoop, young panu, will live. So, Otimo, walk on one people, big bata, own that low, low, our mom, mom, and our mom. And while no baba buying to Badu Motimo, you couldn't even come feel it, should buy a lobby, no way. My fool, you buy a lobby, no way. So once the child, the children go there and daddy, 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 uh, mommy, you come by, mommy, some should come and meet you. There is no food at all. The the man will tell them, "Who soldier? Hey, yo, cool. <laughs> Who soldier? So by the time the children come back, Baba, Muti, mommy, could the mommy, I will tell you, Baba, you bad new jari. It got to a point the children began to face. Is this time correct? Okay. The children began to face their father. Listen, the firstborn brought husband home, an elderly man. The father didn't have anything to say. They settled with their mom. I can't ask of you any. I'm okay. The rule can confiscate. Our auntie mom is so. That girl now is dead. She died of breast cancer. Now this first son too. The the woman put her. That's the guy that is working as a thug with you now. Uh, uh, during the political campaign, put him, uh, him where he will learn a uh, 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 business. But because he didn't have respect for his dad, he didn't have respect for his boss. That boy has about four wives now, and he doesn't have a job. He's always working around. I asked the rest, but do you know that the only one that is happily married is the last girl? Whenever their daddy refused to prepare food for their father, this girl will prepare it secretly and run to shop. Daddy, mommy, ni kema gonja ifu ni shugo mi le ma we ni kema jam. That's Lola. She's happily married and still in her husband's house. Their mom is dead. The baba senior, the mom's very very well, but he's still alive. Posi na lude shinta. So every mother should listen, learn it. Even if your father is not rich, your husband is not rich, cover him. When he makes mistake, don't expose his mistake to his children. If you have misunderstanding with him, don't do it in the presence of the children. See, all those children you are poisoning their hearts, they will still turn against you. I'm telling you, go and write this down. All those children you are poisoning their heart against their father, uh, it will get to a point, reality will be done on them. They too will now begin to realize. Ah, mommy, there's a mistake. Mommy, there's a mistake. They will turn. And that is when those mothers always feel bad. So learn it. Don't devalue your husband before his children. He is the authority figure that will make them understand family order. He's the authority figure that will make them understand what? Family order. If you make them devalue him, such children will never respect order throughout their life. So always speak well of their father. Don't turn your children's heart against them. Now, number two, I'll only talk about two things here before I begin to pray for the fathers. Second thing mothers must not do. Never stop praying for your husband. Now, it is wrong for you to say, I'm not praying for my husband again. Some mothers say, I'm not praying for my husband. Ah, if you don't pray for your husband, he's the one that has the steering of the family. You know, all Igbos always like to go back to their village at the end of their, at old age. Abi, if Iyawe Evan doesn't pray very well, Evan will wake up, maybe when he become, come sissy, and say, Chioma, Ngwa Kaina. Abi, we are going back to village. If he doesn't start praying now, don't say, I will, st- I will not pray for my husband. It's a decision. If you make a wrong choice, you will suffer it. Such scripture. The choice that made Naomi to lose her, her two sons, who made it? It was Elimelech, the husband. He just stood up. Uh uh, uh uh. Israel is difficult. Oh. Oh, yes, so, things are so hard. Let's, let's relocate to Moab. My dear, you say we should relocate. Yes, we are relocating to Moab. Moab we are going. 
they got to Moab, Elimelech was the first to die. After he died, the first son died. After the first son, the last one died. And Naomi said, I came full. This is me now. I want to return empty. Don't stop praying for your husband. Because one wrong choice can cause a havoc of 50 years. No matter how you be praying. If he's not born again, we'll be praying for his salvation. Do you know that if you go and get interested in one wrong girl, he may not be the one to die. The girl may say, I will do everything to make sure you, be, you belong to me. He may kill you, kill the children. If I say I should tell you experience, we won't live here today. We have handled several cases. So you must never stop praying for your husband. The father of your children needs a lot of prayers. You keep praying and praying and praying and you don't stop praying for life. I don't see a one wrong decision can put the entire family in deep trouble. It's an error to say, I will no longer pray for my husband. I'll be praying for myself. It's an error. Hallelujah. Two more to go. If, now listen, a must for all fathers. A must for all fathers. Underline that one like that. A must for all fathers. Which means all fathers hear me. This is compulsory. Bless your children every day. They are your future. Don't curse your children. Will they provoke you? Yes, they will provoke you. My wife will testify. There's a family around our house. The mother we always curse. And you know, the, 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 their daughter. How we should, should just die. How we should, should just die. And he will always tell the father too. So one day, I tried to settle them. They are not members of our church. And the father said, he's just tired. He just wished that this girl should die. That the regrets that they gave back to, him, to her. Beloved, this girl just went out with some of her friends. The, sec the day she came back, her friends came to drop her beside their house and drove away. She died before the morning. Don't curse your children. When they gave back to Moses, what did the father say? He said, this is a proper child. No matter what that child is doing, be speaking what you want to see. Me, I want you are the you are the one that owns the seed. Are you hearing me? I want to be no see one copy no copy no. You want only seed the end. You want to mas you want mas all out the. Because they are the ones that bear your name. They came out of your loins. Hallelujah. A must for all fathers. Number two, always live as an example to them. No, we use it at the family Sunday. Okay, always live as an example to them. I, I didn't hear. Them. Give it to Mama to help me rewrite it. It's a question somebody wrote. So I come again. Live as an example. You are the one they are looking at. Don't do a kind of a thing that will make police to handcuff you, and your children are looking at you. Don't do it. Don't do anything that will make people to come and disgrace you in the presence of your children. Because, listen, it is what your children see in you that they eventually become. So I hear. Finally, I want to pray for fathers. Every father, be on your feet, come to the front here. Are you a biological father or spiritual father? Come to the front. Come towards the altar. I want to pray for you. Because your role is a great role. Come forward, sir. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Shagada baskende le boss. Le gada basata yagadas. All fathers, come forward. Come forward. Bala gada baskende le boss. Shagada basse. Yes, some of them have caught it. If, even if you have not given back to a child, are you not a father yet? You have seen that the role of a father is a very, very big and thick one. You need to be prayed for. You need to be prayed for. That's why I want to pray for you. 
you will not be a shame of a father. Amen. Okay, what can be done to a man that always expects all, all from his wife? A man that always expects all from his wife. A man that always expects all from his wife. I don't understand. Expect what? Hmm? Be up. All like, is it financial? Everything? And, uh, uh, he's not a man. <laughs> Pray and honey. Okay. Hey, I think it's a woman that must, have, that must be asking this question. Such a man is not a man. Now, that's why we say look before you leap. Before you say, yes, I do. You, a man is not a man because he has manhood. Are you hearing me? A man is not a man because he has manhood. What makes a man a man is more than a manhood. I've told you, before you, marry, before you say, yes, sister, you ask, can this man protect me? Can this man provide for me? Can this man give me wise and intelligent instruction? These are things you consider in courtship. So, if you are a married woman asking this question, Uti, what one chance? Ude, Ude, did you want it? Mi, Ude, Lilan, Elo, what? Unto, Mama, Shinsi, Wama, Badura. Ulu, Afisi, Lokan. Hmm. Ule, ni, Bi, o, ni, she, eh? Ule, she, bli, clear. Be, ni. Ah, Igba, ti, even as a pastor even as a pastor but to the level come we started washing my wife will wash our lion that's why i say it is not well, people are poor not because they don't have job people are poor because they don't have drive do you understand if you have drive like me now, I have one thing. Um, um, I have a little pride. If you give me free food and talk on top of it, I will not eat it. I will not eat it. Every man needs small pride. It will drive you to go and walk. If your wife is paying Nepal, be paying everything. Paying house rent. Uh, it's wrong now. It means that you don't have any pride at all. And she will still put food in front of you and say, Come on, 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 are you getting what I'm saying? That's why I want, I want to pray for every man that is here. Hear me. Ishele toma muki yawu yawu ku doko koko wa di yawu ku nishele siye. Shami e da da. What it takes to be the man at home, the man over your children, the man in the life of your wife. I say, receive now. In the name of Jesus. Every battle fighting you to keep you small, I decree, begin to receive victory over that battle now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree that fresh favor come upon your life. Amen. I bless you today. Doors will open for you. Amen. I say doors will open for you. Amen. I say doors will open for you. Amen. I say doors will open for you. Amen. I pray for you. The helpers of destiny you need to meet for your glory to begin to shine again. Begin to meet them. Yeah. Enter to the next level of favor. Yeah. Receive the financial power to be the man in the house. Yeah. Receive the connection power to be the man in the house. Yeah. You will not fall from glory. Yeah. You will not fall from honor. Yeah. It is well with you. Yeah. Go and prosper yeah. on every side. Yeah. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen. and amen now listen before you go back as god blesses you hear me the first 
place you need to establish is your home. Establish your wife. If you have a happy wife, you have a peaceful home. What makes the man to be at peace, to pr prosper, as God blesses you? Now, all our youths that are here, when it is time, and you go, it's time for you to get married, as God blesses you, whatsoever your wife is doing, add to it. Do everything to make your wife comfortable. When she's comfortable, your children will be comfortable. That's one thing so many men don't know. The woman knows how to take care of the children more than the man. But empower your wives. The Lord will help you. And you, uh, take your time with God more serious so that he can give you more revelations, more insights on next things to, things to do at a particular given time. The Lord bless you. You are, you are blessed already, so go and manifest it in Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus.